I've, I've had the the opportunity of working quite closely with your with your family and and teaching both of them in our in our very early class. Yes. Um, but uh, yeah, again, we we really appreciate this opportunity. And uh, if you wouldn't mind just uh, giving us a bit of a uh, an idea of how this journey started for for you and your family. Yeah. So we um, we picked up really quickly in school that both the boys were actually having trouble picking up language, learning language, trying to read, trying to write. Um, our youngest was the glaringly obvious one, but our older boy was, he was put in the lit program at school and, oh, we'll just give him a little bit more help. There was no sort of push to get any testing done or figure it out. But with Luke, that became huge, huge. Um, he was not doing well at school at all. So we did a psych ed on him and the psych ed came up with three specific different things, ADHD, dyslexia and dysgraphia. And so from there we were like, okay, now what? Cause I heard all of that and I went, okay, so what does his life look like when he graduates? What, what is, what is that going to be? Like this could be catastrophic and and I'm used to researching stuff. And I was like, wow, like we have to change this or try to get him to learn to deal with all of these things. And it felt like a lot. And doing the psych ed was like, oh, label, 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 like all these things. And the school then jumps on board and they're like, okay, well, we'll give him an IEP and he'll have this help and this help and this help. But the help was it felt to me like the help was compensation over compensation over compensation. So, oh, his brain couldn't do this. Then we won't get him to do that because that would be really hard for him. So he'll do it like this, or he'll do this in the classroom instead. And he won't do this and he won't do that. And I kept thinking, so then, so what, what does that look like then? He yeah, how's that gonna be? In the long run, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like how do, how does he then, oh, so then he has, so he goes to his first employer and says, oh, but you know what? I need someone to take notes for me and I need this and I need this compensation and I need this, I can't do this, I can't do this. Well, who's going to give him a job when the next kid beside him has nothing to do with any of this? And it just felt to me so, like it just felt really dire. It just did not feel right. And lucky for me, uh, from a couple decades ago, a friend through a friend um, used to work at Eaton Aerosmith and is still working in the field of neuroplasticity for kids. And so I phoned him and I said, okay, here we are. Like, I've always known about your work. And he, <laughs> I used to go to UBC at times and he would say, oh, come meet me. I got to show you my school. Like, oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And he always had this enthusiasm for it and the the you know just an amazing amount of like positive work coming out of that school so I phoned him and I said okay now we have to have a real conversation because here's my son's IEP and mm -hmm. I need to know what you think because a part of me thinks that we're going to be coming into EA in some way shape or form but I don't know how that could possibly come up Right. And so he had a look at it and he said, you know what? He has superpowers and he just needs to learn to use them. And, I and love that. That, yeah, yeah. And so we had a big talk about like, you know, if he were to just do clocks and, you know, thank God for COVID for pushing EA into having to create this whole online system because we, we didn't think that we could send him to UBC. We live too far away from UBC in Vancouver and doing that, I just, that just didn't seem like the best option, even though we knew we wanted to go through this process with EA. So then, you know, we started talking about the online program and we had to kind of sit down as a family and kind of go, oh, okay, so what does this look like? So you've had your, your two boys, they've been with us for you know, the the school year um yep. had a, a few ups and downs uh in terms of the, the progress that you're seeing is it 
-hmm. something that you saw at the beginning? Is it something that you're seeing progressively? Would you be able to expand a bit on that? Yeah, us? yeah. So right from from the beginning, I would say, um, and I don't know how far into clocks we were, but all of a sudden Luke started doing like different things. And I think when you live with a child that has these particular, you know, brain things going on, I guess you could say, you get used to the sort of the dysfunction of it. And it just is your life. Like, and you, you just sort of, you know, oh no, he can't do that. He can't do this. He can't do that. So one of the, one of the things that is a bit crazy for us is their soccer scheduling and my work scheduling. So by the time I get home from work, I have to go and get them from daycare. And then we have to race to the field. And that means getting all the soccer gear on, doing all the stuff in a fast, fast, fast pace. And the boys know how to do this because we've been doing it for many <laughs> years. Uh, but what Luke, one of the things that has really changed with Luke is right from the get-go, you could never give him more than like two directions at one time. So you, so I would say, okay, go upstairs get your jersey on and your shorts. And if I gave him any more than that, the, sh the, sh the shirt would be inside out and backwards and the long sleeve shirt would be over top of the jersey and the shorts right. would be backwards. And there was no chance there would be any. So I'd have to say, okay, go do this, this and this. And then, and then he would come downstairs and he would say, okay, done. And I would say, okay, now go do this and this. And like, there was these like little chunky, short, tiny little things. And now, now, you know, not even a year later in the EA, I can say, okay, Luke, off you go, get your stuff all organized. We need to get to soccer. And you know, you got five minutes. And then he corrects me and says, that's four minutes actually. <laughs> Because now clocks are a very important part and you must be accurate with that. <laughs> Don't say that it's five minutes when it's four minutes. Okay, so so then up he goes. He goes and gets all of his gear together. He comes downstairs. He's fully suited up, ready to go. Just needs help with getting his cleats on and we're good. So it's like, oh, like it completely brought down so much of the chaos. Um, and then, you know, like other stuff started coming up, which... Um, I had sent you before about, you know, he, it's sort of that chaos thing. So he has a bajillion and one different ideas and they're all mumbo jumbo in different orders. And now he can kind of sort through that. So, you know, when it comes to having a shower at night um, or a bath or whatever, he like now he's actually expanded this whole thing since you and I last talked about this. So <laughs> now he goes, he has his towels set up in the bathroom and now he goes to, which he never would have done that before. He would always just walk into the bathroom, get in the bath, have no towel, no nothing to dry off. And then be <laughs> calling and calling, oh, I need this, I need this. Now he has all of that set up. Then he, now he goes and gets his pajamas and brings it into the bathroom because he has found that it's warmer in the bathroom after a bath to then just get into his jammies before he comes out into the hallway to the rest of the house. So he has this whole entire setup going on and it's all in order. It's oh all goodness. like completely organized in order. And that's that was unheard of for him. He was always chaotic, always very just like over here, over there, all over the place. So that that's definitely true. we're seeing in huge, like all across the board, like with everything. So that's nice. Like <laughs> those are those kind of like rewards of like, oh my God, like how did he just figure out how to do that now? Like it's like such a relief, I'm sure. So much. Yeah, yeah. On on all aspects of our family life. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I remember you you shared some some pictures as well of um his agenda and you know, he was yeah. his his, his French as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, his writing is different. He can actually stay on the lines. He can, you know, it's clear there's spaces where there should be spaces. It's not kind of all chaotic and all over the place. And um, yeah, I mean, I feel like there's like been so many different things. And it's like, it's one of those things, though, that like, you kind of just like adapt to whatever's happening. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to kind of pause and go, oh, 
oh, he's not doing that anymore. Like even he does it like such interesting, he's such a nice person too. Like he, 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 like if he sees me sitting on the couch upstairs and, and I'm, you know, whatever, like we're hanging out and then he mm -hmm. goes running to his room and goes and gets a blanket and puts a blanket on me. Oh, just in case you're cold. And it's like, what? Like that, he would never have thought of that or done that or been, you know, sort of aware of mm. those kind of things. And um, yeah, he, I mean, he's just- I love just that term, changing. awareness. The awareness is being, yeah, being able to, to just to, to take in different stimuli and, and being, you know, being okay yeah. with it and perhaps not, not feeling overwhelmed. Um, yeah, yeah. Moment. And even I find like in terms of like his ADHD, I'm not, I used to always have to say to him like, okay, I could tell he was shifty and he was like getting way too much energy pent up. And I would just easily say to him like, Luke, run upstairs to your bedroom as fast as you can, touch your pillow, come back downstairs. And that was enough to like kind of shake it out. And mm -hmm. I have not had to do that or ask him to do that for months now, months and months. And okay. it's not that he doesn't get shifty or doesn't like have that energy in him anymore. I, I don't find that it's gone by any stretch, but he seems able to regulate it himself. He, he wow. knows, like, I think he just kind of knows like, oh, I need to go and do this. And he goes and does it. There's no like asking him to do it. It's probably before we're really noticing it now. Mm -hmm. um, and off he goes, maybe he shoots a couple hoops because we have like a kind of a, pop a shot hoop thing so that he can kind of awesome. get out that energy. Um, and so we see that differently now. It's just a different, it, it's almost like his energy, <laughs> all of his energy, mm -hmm. all of his scatteredness, the chaos, that kind of stuff that was just a, who we knew him to be is dampening. It's like less. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Thank you again so much for, for sharing all this with us. Um, <laughs> Such a such an awesome awesome ride it's been. I'm just I'm fortunate to, to yeah. have been a part of it, and um, no, yeah. we you know we, we hope to even who knows maybe we'll do an update uh, after next year and then see yeah, where they are. Sure. Yeah, see where they're both at. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Kim. Hey. Thanks, Ryan.